Hello, my name is Keshwani. This K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the official SAT study guide. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 732. Please turn to it. Page 732 and today is our lesson number 89. The very first problem in the second column. We are given a graph there. I'm not going to reproduce the graph here. I'm just going to simply talk to you, uh, make sure that the graph is in front of you so that, so that the things that I say make sense to you. The question simply is, we are given a graph of y equal to g of x. So we are told that there exists a relationship between x and y and the name that they have given to that relationship is g. g right here that you see is the name that's what it is, it's the, it's the name of the relationship that exists that exists between x and y it is just a name they could have called it, they could have called it, the, 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 instead of calling it G, they could have called it F of X, which is the more traditional way of doing it. People tend to use letter F because of the word function starts with F, and that's the only reason. But it's just a name that you assign to a relationship between the two variables. They could have called it, uh, they, they could have called it H of X. They could have called it uh, Alpha of X, in which case Alpha would have been the name of the relationship that exists between x and y, they could have called it for the for all for all we care. They so they could have called it if they wanted to. They could have called it monkey of x or hippo of x or or zebra of x. It's just a name or Michael of x. In which case the relationship is the relationship is being called Michael. It's just a name. So here the relationship that is given to us between between the variable x and variable y, I have reproduced it here. And if you look at the graph carefully, you will see that when x equals to one. When x equals to 1, y is approximately 6.5. We don't have to be exact accurate. Uh, when x is equal to 2, when x is equal to 2, y is 5. Now we are told that when we are told that g of 2 equals k. This is how it is read. G of 2. This is how we read it. But what does it mean? It means the value, this, this means the value of the function, which is same as saying, the value of y when x equals 2. Oh, we just found it. When x equals 2, the value of the y is 5. So g of 2, which we wish they're calling k, equals 5, which means k equals 5. The question simply is, what's the value of the function when x equals 5? The question is, what's the value? What is the value? of this function, which is same as saying value of y when x equals 5, because we just found that that's the value of k, right here, that is the value of k, that's what they're saying, which, 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 instead of writing it out like, this is the English language part, this is how you say it in English language, in the, in the language of, in the language of mathematics, this entire sentence, this entire sentence will, will be written as, g of 5 equals what? There you go. Well, we just go here and ask ourselves when x is 5, oh, we, 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 I did not put 5 there, I skipped 5 for some strange reason because I was just looking at the 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10 and so forth. So we have to insert 5. If you look at the graph there, when x is equal to 5, this, this, these don't mean anything. I was, originally I was going to reproduce the graph on the blackboard and I was going to name these, each of these points, which is why you see the A, B, C, D, 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 D ignore that part. So when x is equal to 5, how much is the value of y? Let's find out here. When x is equal to 5, you will see, if you look carefully in the graph, you will see, and you have to look very carefully, when x is equal to 5, but we know that when x is equal to 4, when x is equal to 4, y is 2. When x is equal to 6, y becomes 3. So when x is equal to 5, y seems to me like 2 and a half. 
Very good, that's our answer. When x is equal to 5, y is 2 and a half. y is 2 and a half. Very good. That's it. And the answer is b. The value of the function when x is equal to 5 is 2 and a half. Or value of the y is 2 and a half. That's all. We're done. Let's do the next one. Number 14. The, number, the one that we just finished, number 13, is classified as a medium question. So the one that we are about to do, for some strange reason, they have it categorized as hard question. We'll, we'll see. By the way, if you're one of those people who has trouble with the, with the, concept, of with, with the concept of function and understanding the things that I just explained here, and if you would like to learn this thing in more detail, just type in the word function and my name, Keshwani, and then the word function and search for it and you will see a couple of videos and you might find it fruitful to watch those videos. Do you understand? Number 14. Number 14. We are told that x is between 0 and 8. And we also told that y is between, let's put them next to each other, it will be easier to analyze it. x is between 0 and 8, and y is between 3 and negative 1. The question is, which of the following gives the set of all possible values for x times y, the product of these two variables, x times y, given the fact that the lowest value that x can assume is 0 and the highest value that x is allowed to assume is 8 and given the fact that y is allowed to be all the way down to negative 1 and all the way up to 3 what is the maximum possible value or rather they're not looking for maximum possible value of x times y if they were looking for if this is what they were looking for maximum value maximum value of x and y that would have been very simple the maximum value would be 8 times 3 would be uh, 8, 8, 3 rather 8 times 3 or 24 would have been 8 times 3 or 24 the question is what's the minimum value that's the simple part what's the minimum value the minimum value of x times y and that's the tricky part we have to look at all three combinations. Don't just do this part. Don't just do 0 times 0 times negative 1 is 0. And don't just assume that that's the minimum. Do all three of them. So that's one possibility. Another possibility is uh, we got 8 times 3. Uh, it could have been 8 times negative 1. Let's do, let's do the 8 on the top. We have this part. Let's do 8 on the top. 8 times negative 3 is another possibility. 8 times negative 1 will give us negative 8. So then negative 1, negative 8 is less than 0, which means this is already out of the game. Another possibility, so we got the, we take care of 8, 8 times negative 1 and 8 times 3. We have 0 times negative 1 and 0 times 3. But well, that will again be 0. 0 times 3 will again be 0. So if you multiply 0 by either a negative 1 or, or, or positive 3, it gives us 0. But then we have to realize that if we were to go 8 times negative 1, if, if x happens to be 8, which, is, which, is, which it is allowed to be, it could be all the way up to 8. And if, in other words, if, the, if x happens to have the maximum value that, is, that it is allowed to have, and y happens to have a value, a minimum value that it is allowed to have, which is negative 1, then 8 times negative 1 would be negative 8. And therefore, the range, so the minimum value, the, the minimum value of x and y is negative 8. And therefore, Therefore, the product of x and y, product of x and y, could be as high as 24. Cannot be more than that. It has to be less than or equal to 24. It could be as high as 24, or it could be as low as negative 8, or something more than that. So, product of x and y falls between negative 8 and 24, and that is answer choice E. That's all. That's all. I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.